Welcome back to the blog. Today I'm doing an awesome book. It's the Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. And I love Benjamin Franklin for a lot of reasons, but one of the greatest reasons I like him is what he did uh, with his 13 virtues. I don't know if you've ever heard him before, but that he explains this in his autobiography. Uh, let me tell you first, the first time I read the autobiography, I was fascinated for a few reasons. One, that Benjamin Franklin actually wrote anything. See, I went to public school and we didn't read anything, any original works that I can remember except for, uh, I read Shakespeare, but I never read anything that was like from the Founding Fathers at all. Nothing. I didn't even, I guess I read the preamble to the Constitution. We had to memorize it in 8th grade. But that was it. So I was shocked that Benjamin Franklin had actually written anything. And I came and found out that he wrote a lot. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson was like 34 volumes, that big. Uh, George Washington had like 39 that they've compiled. And so they wrote a lot. But Benjamin, so I was fascinated. The second thing I was fascinated with, I never read anything from that time period. And so he was talking about him coming into town, or when he, when he left the servitude of his brother, and because his brother got in trouble, and so they turned it over to him, signed it, and so then he was free, and he escaped, So he, because he, he was no longer a indentured servant, because his brother had beat him, and he didn't like it there, and, and so he fled, and he would, uh, and he came into Philadelphia, and how he rode all night, and then they came in, and he bought some bread, and he fell asleep in the church, and he met his wife, he didn't realize, obviously, that was going to be his wife, but I was just fascinated by all that and the, what was happening and how the world was at that time. It was very, very intriguing to me. But the, it, it's a great read. It's, it's fun. It's exciting when he, when he gets out of his servitude, how he does that. And before that, how he, how he writes letters. I think they're called the Sally Do Good Letters. He, he does it as a, is it called a... Uh, a pseudonym? Is that what it's called? When you take upon a, a pen name? I can't remember what it's called. But he has a... He takes that name and he submits these letters and his brother likes him so much that he starts publishing them in his paper. Um, and then he escapes. He goes to Philadelphia. And then as he as he grows up and what happens, he ends up going to England. But the, the I think the capstone for me, and, and this is probably why I like Franklin the best, or the number one reason why I like him is his 13 virtues. The 13 virtues, that's what I think that the Ten Boom Institutes is all about. We're about self-improvement, real improvement. We're talk, we want character. We want to be better people for having read a book. We want to be better people today than we were yesterday. We want to be stronger, stronger financially, stronger physically, stronger mentally, stronger spiritually. We want to just improve all our areas of our life and that's what Benjamin Franklin did. And I know that whenever anyone becomes great that they're going to get attacked. It's, I mean, I consider Christ, I consider him the greatest of all and yet he's he's demonized and that he's, and there's the other side where, where people worship him and they think he's, 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 he's the most incredible. And, and then there's all levels below that where Franklin did a lot of good. I mean, a tremendous amount of good. He started the first library, the post office. He invented the lightning uh, rod because all the... Cause, see, and, if you, and we're going to do a, a post on Please Understand Me, and he was a rational. <laughs> and rationals think differently than other people. They're very strategic. They're very um, uh, systems and... And, 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 and they're thinkers. And so all the tallest buildings were burning down and everyone's like, oh, they had the devil in their house or whatever, you know? And he's like, well, if I study it, all the tallest ones are burning down. So maybe lightning's striking them because they're the tallest. And so he invented the lightning rod. He invented the Franklin stove. Uh, he became a self-made man and retired at like 40 or 45. And he talks about running his print shop and how he would work extra hard and work lots of hours. And then we're going to do another post on the, uh, his way to wealth. And I remember reading his way to wealth and I thought, give me a break. This isn't true. It was too simple. It was just principle. 
else's. I just thought you had to do all these, you had to come up with this incredible invention to be wealthy or whatever. And he nails it. So you look forward to that post. But this virtues is it's just amazing because he takes, what he did is he listed 12 virtues that he felt like he needed to work on. And then as he finished them up, he showed them to a friend and a friend said, well, you really need to have humility on there. <laughs> and he's like, humility? I'm totally humble. Well, frankly, wasn't the humblest man in the world. And there's controversy in his life and stuff. He's not a perfect guy by any stretch of the imagination. But he was a great man, I think, a really good man, and did a lot of good things. So he added humility to the, to the virtue. Now, the great thing about that is if you're trying to work on these 13 virtues, that they just happen to come around once a quarter. There's exactly 52 weeks in a year, and 13 is one-fourth of that. So he was able to do them all 13 virtues, and maybe that's why I added the 13, because <laughs> he's like, hey, I could get through all of them four times in one year. And I just found it a, a few minutes ago thumbing through here, and for the life of me, I can't find the, the sheet now that talks about it. But, oh, there it is. Oh, it's right next to the one I was looking at. But since I started here, I, actually, I'm going to sit down there. He also put in a schedule. He put his daily schedule in there, what he did every day. And, uh, He's up at 5 o'clock every day. And they didn't have alarm clocks back then. Uh, just fascinating. And he'd go to sleep at 1 o'clock. No, he'd go to sleep at 10 o'clock. So, and he had correct leisure time. Leisure, put things in their places, supper, music, or diversion, or conversation. Examination of the day. Examination of the day. That was the key to his virtues. He would see, he would write down, and, and that's the next, uh, or, the, or that, that chart I was looking for, his virtues, he would, I don't know if you could see this one, I'll hold it up there. He had Monday, Tuesday, you know, Sunday through Saturday, and then he would have check marks every day, time during the day. And uh, on the left side, each one of these, on the side, each one of these represented a virtue, each one of these letters. And so when he messed up, he put a check. So, if he wasn't humble, then he would put a check to so Sunday, he said something very arrogant. And at the end of the day, he reflected, did I do anything? And he reflected, so he's like, oh, that's right. When I was at church, I told him how I was God's gift to man, or whatever, right? So he said, oh, I wasn't humble, so he put a check there. And then he'd go through all these virtues. And um, what happened is he would have lots of checks. And then eventually, he started having less checks because he because he got more he was more aware more cognizant of his thoughts, which made him more cognizant of which which controlled his actions more. On this one, this title of this page is temperance because that's what he's working on. He's working on this for one full week, and it says eat not to dullness, drink not to elevation. So if he's going to drink, he's not going to get drunk. And if he's going to eat, he's not going to eat to where he's so stuffed that he said dullness. And so, I don't know, I guess that means you're overly, you're stuffed, you've overeaten clearly, and you don't want to do anything, you just feel stuffed. Then the next week, he would do another, he would do another one. So let me see if I can find the list of the virtues, uh, what they were. I've got these initials here, but I can't remember exactly what they were. And I've got to find it for you. Okay, the first one, temperance. Second one, silence. Speak not but what may be benefit others or yourselves. Avoid trifling conversation. Now, if the USFA, <laughs> if we did this, if anyone did this, imagine the impact. One of the most impactful things that, that Franklin and Washington did at the Constitutional Convention is they said almost nothing. But when they spoke, everyone listened. John Adams was just the opposite. He spoke all the time. And so he just, it didn't carry as much weight. And I've realized that I'm a lot like John Adams. I speak too much. And I've learned, I've, I've, I do better now. I need to do a lot better, but I do better than I used to. And I won't say things. I'm more, a little bit more reserved than I used to be. And I think it's a virtue and that I need to practice more. The next one, order. 
Let all your things have their places. Let each part of your business have its time. So you're ordering your stuff, right, your material possessions, and you're ordering your time. So you do time management. So everything has its time. You do things today, you get up and you exercise. You have your, your prayer, your scripture study, you eat, you, you, you bathe, you get ready for the day, right? You don't do that in the afternoon. Or, you know, he has his, or, well, I should say you don't, but you have a specific time. That's how, that's actually how I do mine. But you have a specific time to do your things. And then your house is orderly. You don't have junk drawers all over the place. And there's a clutter everywhere. And thing, things are organized and easy to find, which saves you more time, but makes your house more enjoyable to live in. Number four, resolution. Resolve to perform what, you're, what you ought. Perform without fail what you resolve. So you've got your conscience telling you you ought to do something, and then he says, you do those things, and then without fail, if you resolve to do something, you do it. I'm going to get up at 5 o'clock. You're resolved. You get up. You perform it. So if he didn't get up at 5 o'clock, check. I don't know if that was specifically was one that was his, but if you resolve to do something, and that was one of your resolutions, then that would be it. Number five, frugality. Make no expense, but to do good to others or yourself, waste nothing. Wow. I don't think I need to say anything about that. Six, industry. Lose no time. How much time is wasted at work today? How many unproductive hours there are in the day that the people waste on, on the internet or whatever and they're not being industrious? Be always employed in something useful. Cut off all unnecessary actions. So that specific week, that fifth week, if there was, or sixth week, if there was anything, he'd check if he, did, if he wasted any time. Seventh, sincerity. Use no hurtful deceit. Think innocently and justly, and if you speak, speak accordingly. Eight, justice. Wrong none by doing injuries or omitting the benefits that are your duty. Nine, moderation. Avoid extremes. Wow. <laughs> that would help people. Forbear resenting injuries so much as you think they deserve. Ten, cleanliness. Tolerate no uncleanliness in body, clothes, or habitation. So, your shower is building up mildew, you know you should clean it, and you let it go. You gotta check. And remember, you don't want checks. The fewer checks, the better you're doing. Uh, Eleven, tranquility. Be not disturbed at trifles or at accidents common or unavoidable. Don't get so upset. I've done that. I got so upset and bad out of shape. I'm like, why am I getting so bad out of shape? This is nothing. This is so dumb. Uh, chastity. Rarely use venery, but for health or offspring. <laughs> Uh, never to dullness, weakness, or the injury of your, your or another's piece of reputation. I'm not going to say about that. Humility, imitate Jesus and Socrates. So, just think if you did this, and what if those weren't your exact virtues that you wanted to focus on, but you did it, and you did it for a year, or you did it for two years. Can you imagine the person you would become if you sincerely tried to do it, and you make a check every time you messed up in that one area? And see, so you're only focusing on one virtue for an entire week. So you don't have to keep all 13, oh, I messed up here, I messed up there. See, when you're on, when you're on temperance, if you're not, if you're ha you've got mildew in your shower, it's not a big deal because you're not focused on that. But over time, you'd start, you'd keep that focus. I mean, you, after you did that cleanliness week, if you saw something a different week, you're like, oh, that's, I, that's dirty, I need to do it. You know, I need to clean it because I don't, I don't tolerate any uh, uncleanliness in my home. Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin is excellent. It is such a great book. I know he's controversial, uh, but let's not take away from negative things and, and, the, and the things that he did wrong and lose out on all the great things he did and, and learn from a man that actually had major impact, societal impact in this world. Thanks. Enjoy. Enjoy.